In the second tutorial of our HSM videos, we're going to go ahead and do a simple roughing operation for this pocket that we have here. Same as we did before, we're going to enter into the CAM tab. We're going to choose Tool Isometric. We're going to come to our Setup folder. And we're going to set up each one of our coordinates and our stock. I'll go ahead and relocate the WCS over here to the corner. I already have it selected for model orientation and stock box point. Um, those are the defaults and those are the ones that I use most often. I'll come directly to the stock. I'm going to change it from fixed box size to relative size and to add no additional stock. For the majority of the time you could use the fixed box size if you knew that the dimensions were going to be the same as your part. I'll go ahead and select OK. You have two different pocketing operations that we can do. We're going to go through both of them. The first one is the simplest, which is just a simple 2D pocket that is going to use simple offset geometry to concentrically make our part. So I'll choose 2D pocket. For here, it wants me to first select my tool. I'll come down to my tool library, and I'm going to select an appropriate tool. For this one, we'll select tool 7, half inch end mill. Once I have the tool, I can come over to my geometry tab and I can pick the pocket selections. I'm going to pick this bottom face or you can pick the outside profile. I have the one will work. So I'm going to pick this large bottom face and I can go straight to my depth tab or my height tab. For the most part, these should now be correct. If at any point in time you then want to change them, you can come over to something like selection and you can actually come in and you can pick a part and it will drop that level or raise the level to wherever you want the operation to start and stop. So we're going to start at our stock top and we're going to stop at either the selection which was the face that we had um, which was the contoured selection or one that we manually select. I'll then come to the passes. For this one the default is for stock to leave and I'm going to turn that off so I'm going to do this all in one operation. I will then come to my multiple depths because I don't want to try to take this depth in one shot. So I'll say multiple depths and here's where I can set in the dimension that I want. On a regular basis I typically take one-third to fifty percent of the bit diameter as my depth or cut increment. So I'm going to change the maximum roughing to 0.25, which is 50% of the tool that I'm using. Um, I'll leave the rest of these alone. I am going to make sure that I'm on climb milling um, on a regular basis. If I have the opportunity to choose one, I'll usually choose climb milling. Um, maximum step over right now is set at 95% of the tool. So we're going to change our maximum step over to 50% of the tool as well which is going to be a quarter of an inch. I'll then come to my linking and for the majority of the time I can leave most of these alone. My lead-ins, lead-outs, allow rapid retracts. Um, on a regular basis I can usually leave this tab alone. Select OK. You should be able to see that I now have multiple cut increments and I have a helical approach to come into the part. I'll then come over to simulate make sure my stock is turned on and select play. You can now see the helix comes into the part. Once it gets to the depth it will then work its way through the part. I can do a show comparison and you can see right now that there are areas in each one of these corners that the radius of the tool was not able to get. I could do a rest roughing operation to remove the rest of those um, for this one, we'll say that they're okay. I can now go through 2D Adaptive. I can either delete this pocket if I want. For this operation, we're going to suppress it. And that way we can have multiple operations and we can unsuppress or suppress them as we go. So for this one, we're now going to select 2D Adaptive. 
for 2D Adaptive, it's all going to be set up the same way. Because I have already selected a tool once, it already thinks that tool 7 is the tool I want to use. Pockets, I can choose the same pockets. Stock and contours are done the same way. And for the majority of the time, with this specific type of operation, um, I can take that stock to leave off, set up the multiple depths just as I did before. And then I can leave these passes alone. And you can see that there is a little bit different strategy between the 2D pocket and the 2D adaptive pocket. I'll go to simulate. It'll do the same helical approach as it did before. And this time it'll do more of a process where it tries to whittle away at the areas rather than try to take concentric rings.